<laughs> well, welcome everyone. My name is Joe Bell and I'm one of the team members here at Sanctuary in the Woods. And joining me today is the rest of our team. My partner, Cheryl Meyer, who's been greeting so many of you as you popped in. And Ken Martin and Tom Cole are here, as well as Barb Crabtree. Cheryl, if you'd keep letting folks in as they jump into our waiting room, I'd appreciate that. So on behalf of our amazing and quite good looking team, I might add, I am deeply honored to welcome you all to our second annual and second virtual sanctuary annual meeting. So thank you so much for coming. Over the next hour, and we've timed things, so trust me, over the next hour, we fit it all in. We're gonna take turns sharing the remarkable strides we've made within the last 12 months of a world living within a pandemic, which for many of us has changed everything. Today, you're gonna to hear how our response to the COVID pandemic has challenged us and how it has blessed us and how it has split us as for nearly the last 18 months, our team has been physically divided by about 1500 miles. We've had a Northern component as Cheryl and I have lived up in Michigan most of this time, caring for my mom and living with her, probably bothering her mom, um, but with Bader and living in Michigan. And we've had a Southern team that stayed down here in Maynard, Texas, just east of Texas or of Austin, Texas on the property. And today, beyond sharing what we've accomplished in 2021, we're even more excited to share with you what we see in the year ahead. So before we start, a few things to note. Over the last 22 months, we've been running on two tracks. And the first lane that we're gonna share with you today emerged as one of those blessings I mentioned just a moment ago. It was our decision to go online and launch our fourth rebrand really establishing our fourth sanctuary community. Many of you may not know that previous to May of 2020, when we launched Sanctuary Online, we have been Sanctuary in the Woods, we have been Sanctuary at Sea, and we have been Sanctuary on the Road. We've built a cruising community, a camping community, and of course, our, our dream goal of building our retreat center here just east of Austin, Texas. In a moment, Ken's gonna share with you about both the progress we've made and the plans we have for our Sanctuary Online community. And in that second lane, Cheryl's excited to share with you the incredible progress we've made regarding our original dream of building a retreat site on the property here just east of Austin in Texas, working with our engineering firm and details around that. And in our third presentation of the day, Cheryl and Barb are gonna team up to share all the really sexy parts of our year. You know, admin, finances, database, communication. And, and honestly, while I poke fun, I know that everyone on this call knows that um, the progress we've made in these areas of our business infrastructure really are gonna show you the health of our organization. And without that infrastructure, um, we'll never be able to realize our dream of building these communities in a place where people can rest, refresh, and reframe. So for many of you, you know, it's been our intentional work to build the- All right, Bobby. I'm on, stay, call me after four, after, after five. <laughs> you guys can go five, ahead and I'm mute yourselves. That will be probably a little bit helpful so we can hear. Um, but it's, Sanctuary has always been a place to rest which for everybody, that's something different, right? But right now, most folks in the world are tired. It means to refresh, whether that be coming into community and having dinner around a table with many people sharing ideas or just unplugging and maybe grabbing some food from our organic garden and eating for yourself. Um, re-engaging, once again, we believe that you can re-engage um, once you have taken the time to rest, taken the time to refresh, really to reframe the circumstances of your lives. And that re-engagement is us sending you back from whence you came, whether it be off a ship, back off a camping site, back off sanctuary, to live your life a little more gently and consciously because you were here with us at sanctuary for a while. 
So we have worked very hard to create these communities. We've been really intentional regarding our work to continually develop and integrate our database as the backbone of our ever more rigorous infrastructure. All that's allowing us to manage and track our finances and communicate with you about all this happening in sanctuary. So I do want to remind you that when you work two tracks, it has required twice the work. And while many of you may not be aware, while Ken and Tom and Cheryl and myself are the principals and the directors of the board of sanctuary, we have to keep the long range plans, the dreams and the vision alive and well, but we're also the hands and feet of every tactical non long range thing that happens within our sanctuary communities. Now, beyond the four of us, many of you know that Barb Crabtree joined Sanctuary in 2019 as a consultant to our board. Living on site, Barb has been a godsend to all of us and has kept us so on course that even while COVID separated us physically, we actually still met and moved the needle on the initiatives of Sanctuary Forward nearly every week while we were apart. Now, I wanna clarify one thing before we get going in today, and it's sometimes confusing for people. So we're gonna try and help you out today. The homestead where we live, the homes in which we live are called sanctuary. We're also building a nonprofit retreat center that's called sanctuary in the woods. These two land tracks are actually legally delineated and they're separated by a natural watershed and pond that will become part of the sanctuary in the woods property. And until the physical retreat center is built and operational, we've used the property that we live on to host events and retreats and functions and weddings and pool parties, donor events and the like. But it's really important to us that you know there is zero commingling of funds. Okay, funds that are given in support of our sanctuary communities do not support our own personal living expenses, you know, or the expenses of just sanctuary, the places where we live. So we want to be really careful, um, just that you were very clear on that, that although we kind of use the term sanctuary and sanctuary in the woods back and forth, that truly there's a homestead, there's a sanctuary in the woods where we're building a property that, and, and all those are legally separated and funds wise, we're very careful. They're also legally separated. Um, so <laughs> now what I want you to also say is there might be many questions that come up um, along the way today. And so we'd love it if you can just pop out your chat box and you can just post questions in there. We're gonna gather those and as we finish the presentations today, we'll go ahead and address those questions. And um, we, we, we've contained the day such that it, everything we want to share with you is inside our first hour. Then if you'd like to stick around for Q&A, you can do that. Otherwise, um, you can take off because we've asked you for an hour of our time. And one of the gorgeous things we're doing today is because of the growth of our network, we're really clear that many of you on this call have never yet been blessed to set foot on our property. So you may not have any idea what we're talking about. So between each presentation today, we're gonna to be showing you some photographs so you can get a feel of what it's going to be like when you visit us. And due to COVID, many of you who've been here countless times haven't been here in a while. So we hope these pictures remind you of how it feels um, when you're on property. Sound good? Yes. All right. Barb, if you could uh, unshare your screen, I'll go ahead and pop up those first slides. All right. I just moved something around. I would say pause and talk amongst yourselves, but I don't really want you to do that. I want you to go ahead. Yeah, just look at all the lovely faces. That's all. I know. <laughs> look at all the lovely faces for just one moment <laughs> while I do that thing. 
Well, you do that thing you do. I do that thing I do that I just did. Look at that. See, a professional breathing the entire time. So here we go. Let me show a few of you. Um, and actually, it's not me showing you. I would love to um, introduce you to your host this morning. Um, I love this picture. Every morning we wake up and we do a bit of ball playing on the property. And this, this picture, I swear it looked like it was the Beatles going across Abbey Road. But it's not really John and Ringo and Paul. The two guards today are Gov, who's actually in charge of the property. She's our five-year-old Golden. Bader, who's the new kid on the block, trust me, but she thinks she's in love with Gov and just uh, is pretty. <laughs> she's playing the part of Ringo today. And Gov's pup, Molly, number three there, is uh, the, biggest, the biggest babe and the most fun um, farm dog on our property. Now, those three are the big dogs, but over here, let me tell you what, do not tell Grace, okay? She thinks she's big, <laughs> it's all of them. So there's Grace on a picnic table across the property from Sanctuary uh -huh. Village. Anyway, these are the four uh -huh. that are gonna guide you today. Beyond that, whenever you pull onto the property at Sanctuary, you'll be greeted by our beautiful Sanctuary Stone. We always wanna thank Tony and Leanne for that gorgeous stone. And sometimes you'll see us standing behind it wearing our green outfits because, you know, sanctuary green. Sometimes you'll see us dressed up for Easter, but we'll be there. I mean, we really just do stand behind the stone all the time, even at night. <laughs> we're there. Kind of spooky looking, actually, but we're going to be there to greet you, even on holidays. Okay, so you know we love our stone, and uh, you hopefully can see that, that we just love the fact that as you come into the grounds, you're greeted and welcomed. Sanctuary, as I said, is a place where we believe that everyone can come to rest, to refresh, to reframe how they're taking a look at the current circumstances of their world, and then to leave us and re-engage their life more consciously more gently, more hope-filled because they were here with us for a while. Many, many moons ago, if you look at this picture and those of you who've been on property, this was the first sanctuary stone on the other side of the driveway. And right behind it, you see a lot of woods. If you were to look in that same space today, you'd see the rake restored, Cheryl's in my tiny home back there. We have driveways and a split rail fence now. So things have changed a long time from our first guide. That was our Sobel who has since uh, crossed the Rainbow Bridge. Mornings rise the sun every day over the pond. Just honestly, it's simply stunning. As stunning as nightfall is when the moon rises over that same area. You can look out over the pool on a sunny summer morning. You can even see the fog raising off the pond in the background. Occasionally, it gets really cold and that same pool is beautiful. Maybe not as welcoming, but definitely is beautiful. Sanctuary is a place where all are welcome, no matter where you're from, near and far. A place where it's always a wonderful time of the year, a place where you can come and enjoy the bounty from our raised gardens, a place you can come to reflect alone with a lurking Labrador or with friends. But it's always a place of beauty and a place we welcome you to. Ken, I would love to invite you yes. to tee up the next little bit. Yeah, thank you, Joe, and uh, welcome everyone. Um, you know, like most of the institutions that operated primarily uh, with group meetings, the primary way in which COVID has affected us here at Sanctuary in the Woods um, is that our primary presence since May of 2020 
has shifted from face to face to Zoom. We wanted to continue offering a way for people to stay in community with each other. And so we created Sanctuary Online as a way to maintain that connection and also as a place where we could inform each other and share our opinions and ideas about a very wide range uh, of topics. So since we began Sanctuary Online, we have produced a total of 77 weekly programs, and we have been joined by viewers from at least half of the U.S. states and from six other countries. So while going online was not our original objective, uh, it has allowed us to remain in contact with many of you who were our original supporters. But at the same time, we've been able to create a new network of friends, uh, both locally and literally uh, all around the world. So 2021 was our first year, full year of Sanctuary Online programming. So let me um, just take you on a, a real fast and fun walk down memory lane uh, about what we did uh, last year. During 2021, we produced six different series. We began the year with a two-part series entitled How the Great Religions Began and What They Believe. And then during the season of Lent, Joe and Cheryl and I were joined by Reverend Elder Lily Brock and Reverend Terry Steed Pierce in presenting a five-part series that offered a taste of the curriculum, creating a life that matters. Then during the summer, we introduced a new series entitled Meet the Artist, and we introduced you to five very different artists. Uh, Edie Dissler, who is a sculptor and jewelry maker. Jason Hanish, who is an oil painter. Shelley King, who is a performing and recording artist and former Texas Musician of the Year. Uh, then Amy McCarter and Pat Ludwig uh, introduced us to the art of quilting. And finally, Hamila shared her unique, uh, beautiful, jewelry making skills. That was followed by a four session series on human sexuality and the Bible. And then of course, our book club hosted by Cheryl met monthly and they read and discussed a total of 11 different books during the year. And then we finished our year with our Advent series, Fire and Light Celebrations and Symbols from Around the World. Also in 2021, we produced five programs just to acknowledge and celebrate uh, different occasions and holidays, uh, beginning with uh, Black History Month when we were joined by Reverend Brendan Boone and Reverend William uh, Knight and Reverend Elder Carolyn Mobley. That was followed by a wonderful Seder celebration. That was followed by Earth Day with our special guest landscape designer, Bud Twilley. And then Joe's mom, who's with us today, a 92-year-old Granny Bell entertained us and informed us uh, on Mother's Day. And then finally, uh, Barb Crabtree gave us a master class uh, in how to maximize Giving Tuesday uh, to raise funds for all the different nonprofit organizations uh, that we support. We also conducted two other uh, independent individual interviews, one with author Ellen Reed and the other with AIDS activist and now media star, Reverend Steve Peters. And then finally in 2021, we introduced a new feature, uh, which we're calling Travelogue. And for the first episode, uh, Barb Crabtree took us on a fascinating trip to Egypt. So including one other session, just to welcome everyone back uh, from the summer, we <coughs> produced a total of 40 sanctuary online programs in 2020, 2021. So would you just unmute for a moment and thank all of these people who gave us these hours and hours and hours uh, of Thank wonderful you. entertainment. Thanks, everyone. Oh, that was amazing. Thank you so Thank much. You. We appreciate it. Thank you. Great year. Yeah, amazing. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Fabulous. Now, after, after we had produced 35 of those 40 programs, uh, Barb did an analysis for us by dividing those 35 
programs into categories by content. And the pie chart uh, that you see now uh, will show you that uh, our largest amount of programming was educational in nature with 38%. And that was followed by community building through our book club and then informational programming and then community building through a number of other topics to total 52%. And that was followed by entertainment, uh, which was 7% because sometimes you just have to stop and laugh at yourselves and each other. Uh, and we did quite a bit of that in 2021. And then our final category was inspirational uh, for 3%. The bar graph that you can see now shows the average attendance for each of those programs and in each of those categories. And I'll tell you, this has given us really uh, invaluable information as we are trying to plan uh, for the future. Because I began by saying that like so many others, uh, COVID necessitated our making a swift and unplanned for shift from face-to-face -face meetings here on site to Zoom. And now, also like many of them, we find ourselves needing to plan for a future that is going to include both of those things. So Cheryl is gonna tell you more about how we're moving forward with our building uh, plans, but I wanna share with you that we are in ongoing discussions about how Sanctuary Online is going to meet this new future. We asked ourselves whether those original objectives, whether we were still meeting our original objectives. And then we asked ourselves whether those objectives are still relevant or whether they need to be revised as the world around us uh, is continuing to change. So in a world now with uh, vaccines and uh, boosters and testing uh, and treatments soon to come, and hope that the pandemic is soon going to become endemic, we are asking ourselves whether the world might have changed so much that we might need to change also. And so we need to answer two very important questions. The first question is, should Sanctuary Online continue as it is? That is with one hour of programming each week, featuring widely varying general interest topics, or should we offer more programs that are more specialized with more targeted audiences based on those different interests and those different categories that we just talked about? Recognizing that if we do that, then more programs are going to increase our costs are going, we're, then we're gonna need more volunteers and that some of those programs then might need to be monetized. And of course, we want and need your participation in helping us answer those two questions. And so you're gonna be hearing from us very soon about the ways in which you can help us uh, make those decisions about the future of Sanctuary Online. And remember, if you missed any of those uh, 40 programs that we produced last year that I just talked about or, or and want to watch them are actually any of the 77 programs that we have produced so far. The link that will take you directly to our YouTube. And somebody asked for this before we even began. This link will take you directly to our YouTube and the link is on your screen uh, and in the chat box right now. So many of you have told us in so many different ways how much Sanctuary Online ha has meant to you, how important has, it has become in your lives. Just yesterday, one of you shared with us that Sanctuary Online literally saved your life in 2021. And so we want to promise you that Sanctuary Online is going to continue to be a part of the way that Sanctuary in the Woods fulfills its mission. And we want to thank all of you who have participated, who have attended, uh, who have made this such a rich experience for us this last year. Thank you.
Thank you. Toby? It's right here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jen. Mm -hmm. I would like to uh, tee up a few things to continue our tour. Okay, so here we go in just a second. As Ken was mentioning about Sanctuary Online, I don't know that many of you know the story of how we actually began Sanctuary Online, how we um, stumbled into it, put it that way. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll open, I'll peel back the curtain a tiny bit and uh, introduce you to the birth of Sanctuary Online and also to introduce you to a few more of our furry and feathered tenants here at Sanctuary. So the very first time we um, we did anything, we um, <laughs> we were how do I say this? Compared to the studio which which we use today, the proper lighting and things like that, you can see my little um, sanctuary at sea um, <laughs> drinking cup, probably just to help me remember what we were all about. This was actually our very first on May fifth of twenty twenty. This is Marsha McPhee hosting our very first Sanctuary on Loan show, 77 shows ago. And you can see we've used dining room lighting here. Cheryl looks worried. Ken over here, if you can see the look on his face, I had to crop him out because he really looked worried. And I'm um, faking it with this cute little tripod <laughs> and our camera. So that was our first night. Um, we've learned a lot in 77 shows. <laughs> this one I have to show you because this was our first, right after COVID started, we've been doing satyrs um, on site at Sanctuary in, in our home for, for years and years. We've written our own Sanctuary Haggadah. It's a beautiful um, evening dinner, but we went, well, what are we gonna do now? It's COVID. And remember, we, none of us knew how long COVID was gonna last, like maybe two weeks or maybe two months or maybe forever. And so if you look here, what I wanna draw your attention to Here's my computer. Here's my script. Um, here's my telephone. So that in theory, if Cheryl and Ken and Tom didn't look so worried, they could actually see themselves on screen. And that was the speaker we were using. So we were trying to get it really close. And yes, Kelly, those are boxes of chicken sock. <laughs> so, <laughs> You never know what's behind the camera, right? But in front of the camera, you see a bunch of worried faces right there from those three, um, which is probably a valid emotion. Barb was hidden back here. See this chair facing backwards? Barb was actually, I'm trying to remember, Barb, why we had you back there besides you had to open the door to let <laughs> um, during the show. Was but you were also, I think you were doing something with your computer. Anyway, you were tucked back there in the dark. It was, <laughs> it was hilarious and it was the birth of something profound. So I just wanna share that with you today. And there's us <laughs> afterward because one, we were done and two, we had survived. <laughs> so again, in all of our little uh, sanctuary outfits. Um, many of you know that we get fresh chicken eggs every day from our little chickens at Cluck Creek. This is Cheryl. Um, but one day she and Tom were making one of our chicken mamas who was very sad um, because she wasn't a chicken mama into a chicken mama. That is a longer story than we have today, but that is why Cheryl looks so happy um, because she was able to be kind of a sous chef in Tom's world of helping the chicken mama feel like a chicken mama and make eggs. So we enjoy eggs. If you've been to Sanctuary and you haven't gotten a dozen eggs, something was wrong that day. Um, I know there are people all over Texas that eat our chicken eggs. Tom, all on you, my friend. He is the chicken master, I tell you what. Um, <laughs> this is Joanne. Um, I think Willie might be one of our oldest animals on site. Ken, maybe you can confer that. Yes. Willie has been here forever. Yes. Um, I think he came on the property, maybe. I'm just lying, Ken, but maybe he came with the property. Um, Willie either thinks about he's a Labrador. 15 years. Pardon? Fif 15? About 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, 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 in donkey years. So Willie sometimes feels like a Labrador. 
He sometimes thinks he's a goaty goat, but he always screams in pain like he's being stuck in his eye with a stick when you have food. Apples, bread, <laughs> carrots, every day, right? So if you come to Sanctuary, um, we had guests just last week and they had a bucket of apples. Don't forget, apples, carrots, bread, butterscotch candies, right? Ken are his favorite. Anyway, here's Willie. <clears throat> and here's Willie and Amigo. Amigo is our pony. His name is actually Amigo Dos because he's our second pony. He looks a lot like our first pony. Um, funny that we named him Amigo because neither of them are really that friendly. <laughs> so anyway, Amigo and Willie, um, after being over at your house, Bill and Blake for their um, apple breakfast are on their way through the pond, um, heading to us for carrots. So it's pretty much a nice schedule. These guys live a cushy life. The view right here, you can see the fence yeah. in the pond. You're looking from Sanctuary's property where we live over, you can see this is stacked wood um, that we have cedar um, preparing for the build. But we, when, we, when we've cleared the property, that's actually the Sanctuary in the Woods property across this little pond and separated by our fence. Our peacocks, um, man, always a thing of beauty. Uh, we've had boy peacocks, we've had lady peacocks, we've had baby peacocks. Right now we have no peacocks because you can't keep peacocks unless they wanna stay. This peacock, Prince, um, one of our more beautiful, I think he found a lady down the road, right? Tom or Ken, and he headed off and he hasn't been yeah. back. Um, part of that is because he and Gov had a misunderstanding when Gov was a puppy. And I'll just leave the story at that. You can surmise anything you want. She was not nice to them. They were not nice to her. And things change on the farm and things like that happen. Speaking of Gov, we have puppies and kitties everywhere. This is Gov with her goaty goat family. Um, Barb is our cat lady. I don't know how many are actually over there now, Bob. Maybe four to seven to 10 to 15, depends on the day. Um, and the kitties live right outside the electric fence so they can terrorize the puppies. I think that's how, that's how it works, right, Barb? All right, my mm. friends, that's enough pictures for that little bit. Um, Cheryl, I know that you have some more stuff to tee up for us. So if you jump on, I will jump off. And there you go, my friend. Bless them, honey. <laughs> Now, when it comes to our physical retreat center, 2021 was about morphing and adjusting. At last year's annual meeting, we told you we were working with an engineering firm and had completed two preliminary reports, the property condition assessment and the topographic survey. And next, we began working on the preliminary land plan to include septic design. As we considered the continuing world changes, we processed possibilities and options with our engineer and we found ourselves doing two things. First, we became incredibly grateful for God's timing. What if we had built the retreat center before COVID? No one could have come. Our financial struggles would have been huge and Sanctuary in Line might never have been born. Second, we began considering how we might change our plans and process, maybe break our project into phases, maybe get a second professional opinion. Our driving question became, how can we best shape a property to meet people's living with COVID needs? And with that mindset, it seemed our path was diverging from our engineering firm's approach. We definitely needed another professional perspective. So in the last quarter of 2021, we consulted with a contractor whose experience was with smaller projects. And he agreed the engineering firm's approach was more than we required and that phasing made sense. We hired him as a consultant and suspended our work with the engineering firm. We also met with Blake Gruget. He and his husband, Bill Young, had just finished building their new home, which is next door to Sanctuary's property. Blake had acted as the general contractor, worked with subcontractors, and applied for the required building permits himself. And although this was a residential endeavor, um, the process for small commercial ventures has many similarities. 
So we're very excited and grateful that Blake has agreed to work with us and advise us through this process. He's already helped us decide our next steps. Thank you, thank you, Blake. And before I move on to those next steps, we also want to thank you, Blake, for the beautiful upgrades you made to our website earlier this year. We are so very grateful for you. So our next steps are to secure <clears throat> funding through major donors and potentially also through a bank loan. We're revising and completing our business plan and we have an appointment to meet with our credit union to ask questions and find out you know, what parts of the process might have changed in the past two years. We wanna make sure we're still on the right path. Second, we're excited to be designing a building layout for our first phase buildings that will meet the needs of both individual and small group retreats. We have an appointment to consult with Leland's Lodges in Grandview. They do custom designs and we believe they can help us create an amazing retreat place. Third, we're searching for a contractor. Now we're moving forward on these first two steps, but right now during COVID, it's challenging to find a reliable contractor. So for those of you who are local, do you know anyone or know someone who might know someone that might be able to work with us on this venture? If so, please contact us. We also need more people to help us. Whether you're local or not, if you have experience with any aspect of land development or procuring funding, or if you know someone, we'd love to hear from you. And regarding funding, we've been blessed with 11 regular monthly donors and we're so very grateful. Many of you are included in this partnership with us. Your regular donations are immensely helpful and not just for budgeting purposes. As we seek funding to build the retreat center, one of the questions potential funders will ask is, how many regular givers do you have supporting your building plans? See, the number of givers is as important as the amount they give. Joe and I both remember several years ago when MCC Toronto started a campaign where church members donated $10 per month toward a monthly donation the church would give to a Toronto community organization. And every month, the recipient of the gift would come to the front of the church to receive the check and to thank us. The first gifts were $500, but soon more and more congregants started giving and the church was able to provide checks of thousands of dollars. Joe and I started giving when our church first started this community donation. And even though we left Toronto five years ago, we're still happy to give $10 a month. Maybe you've been considering becoming a regular Sanctuary in the Woods monthly donor. If so, we'd be honored and grateful. Sanctuary in the Woods is a nonprofit charitable organization, a 501c3, and we provide tax receipts to everyone who donates. So if you wanna know more about how to become a regular donor, please private message me in the chat and I'll call you next week. And now, instead of a punchy ending, how about some more of those fabulous photos of Sanctuary? Thank you, Winnie, for that punchy ending. <laughs> 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 That's fabulous. Okay, so next up is a little bit about construction. Not a lot about construction, but a little bit about construction. I'll share my slides again. And one of the things, um, although many folks know that we have many animals on property, we also have lots of goody goats and they seem to always be the favorites whenever we post one on Facebook or a picture or when folks come, they like, yeah, we want to see you guys, but can we, can we go see the goody goats? So Cheryl, um, one of my favorite pictures is this one. I told you that governor was in charge of this property, but until you've shown up and seen that look when you come in, that's, that's actually coming in the driveway. Um, a tiny piece of construction equipment as we were clearing the property for Sanctuary Online. Our architects have told us that until we can see the whole property and find those beautiful trees that we wanna maintain, 
that we shouldn't really build anything. So we've cleared the property. And this was governor one morning greeting um, the crew. Let's just, let's just call it that. That dog does not like when things change around here and she will let you know. <laughs> um, this other bit, Kelly, you might recognize the cuties in this picture. Um, this is Dwayne and Michael. I shared a bit ago that the homestead property where we live, lot four, and the property two and three, the tracks two and three, that are gonna become sanctuary um, in the woods, per se, the, the retreat center, we're separated by something that's called a watershed. It's a natural water, watershed where from across the street, where we luckily and lovingly have 300 and some acres of just polished park area, which we think is our own, especially since during COVID, nearly no one is there. So um, a, the, the water comes from across um, the park down under the street, which you can see, which is right here. And then it kind of wiggles its way down into our pond and then through the pond. What we've done is we're actually creating a really pretty swale with this construction this day so that the water, instead of just making its own way from the um, other side of the street to the pond, it's gonna actually be a really beautiful waterway coming down and leading into the pond. So while we haven't built buildings yet, construction per se on the site has happened a number of times over the last few years as we prepare the property. So the goaty goats. Wheezy, <laughs> <laughs> this I believe again, just like Willie has been here forever, Wheezy was one of our longest standing goats and she was Tom's favorite. This was just an amazing goat. She was friendly, she was big, but she was just the greatest goat. And the day that she birthed her mini me, this is Lady Gaga. Um, <laughs> I just love this picture. It's their spitting images of each other. And Gaga had an attitude. That's why she got that name. She, um, she was also a little tiny force we reckoned with. Here's um, a bunch of cuties just curled up next to the wall there, but we just, uh, just a little picture of goaty goats. This is actually an Easter morning when Ken and I looked um, exceedingly rested, even though there were probably 60 people en route for lunch. And we came home from church to three brand new babies. And if you know anything about goats, when there are three babies, they can't all drink. So we were encouraging this one and she took onto the bottle. And I think her next friend, yep, was Callie. So um, pretty easy, pretty quick to train kids to, to, to feed goats on this property. You're <laughs> pretty familiar with us. And then again, um, Kim's girls uh, on an Easter Sunday, we had a goat holding session and a photography session. So if you were anywhere near the property, we would stick a goat in your arms. You sat down next to the rose bush and, you know, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite pictures, I have no idea. This is Zoe um, playing Pied Piper of goaties. But this is a time when we had, I think we had 30 or 40 goats at this one time, which by the way, is way too many for us. But um, Zoe and Zach are Edie's um, kids and they come out here quite often, both to play in the pool, to have barbecues and, and thank God for Zoe taking care of all those little baby goaties. I just thought it was a fabulous, fabulous shot. There you go. That's enough of this part of our tour. Cheryl and Barb, I think you have a little more for us. All this sexy stuff, bring it on. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, Joby. I appreciate that. <laughs> and this night might not be the sexy part of the presentation, but I'm pleased to share where we are financially and then turn it over to Barb to talk about how we're continuing to build and use our infrastructure systems. In 2021, we received $18,668, all in donations. Although, although this is only slightly higher than our 2020 income, which was 18,000, we deliberately kept our expenses down this year, almost $4,000 less than in 2020, as we plan for major building expenses. First, a huge thank you to our monthly donors. $9,000, almost half of our income, 
came from your regular donations. Second, for the last two years during the pandemic, Giving Tuesday has been our only fundraiser. And we're so very appreciative of all of you who have donated to Sanctuary in 2021. Third, we developed additional ways to give through Venmo and PayPal. And we have active links on our weekly emails and on our website. Regarding expenses, $4,200, which is 52% of our 2021 expenses were pre-construction and engineering related. The other half of our expenses were for business operational expenses, which include database management system, Zoom subscription, our website, emails, Microsoft software, and of course, online programming. As Joe said, we call the property, the community property where we live, Sanctuary. And even when Sanctuary in the Woods Retreat Center is operational, we intend this property and the animals, gardens, and pool to be adjunct support to the retreat center. But sanctuary funds do not support our community property. We're very frugal with sanctuary dollars. None of us on this team takes a dime of salary. We live and work together here on this beautiful property where only satellite internet is available. And it's quite expensive. Over $700 per month for three separate accounts to serve our three separate residences. While we use our internet for more than sanctuary business and we pay for it with personal funds, we did have to upgrade one of our accounts to a commercial line in order to provide more stable bandwidth for sanctuary mm -hmm. online. Without it, we just couldn't see faces and we couldn't hear well. So you can see we've been very deliberate about protecting your donations to sanctuary and we're delighted because that means we're beginning 2022 with significant, significantly more money in the bank than we had in the last two years. And that gives us confidence as we seek major funding for construction. Barb, can you share our infrastructure news? Sure, thanks Cheryl. Uh, as you can see, uh, last year, we, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the development of the database. And that was the focus in 2020, was the development phase. In 2021, the database was operational and we used it for functions such as tracking participation in sanctuary online programs. Remember those charts that Ken showed you? Those came from the tracking data that we put into the database. We use it to send out weekly emails and text messages. And we use it in 2021 to track donations which was a new feature. We had not done that prior to 2021. And since we now have a full year of donation information, this year for the first time, Cheryl is preparing to send out tax statements through the database. And that's going to be a new function for us as well. We also piloted the, using the database to register attendees for a program. And we did this when we asked folks to pre-register for CLM back in March. That worked out well, and we will use this feature for future programs when we ask people to register. As we expanded our operational uses for the database, we then uh, moved into a development phase for our financial system. So in 2020, our development was focused on the database. In 2021, our development was focused on finances. With the help and countless pro bono volunteer hours from CPA Kelly Robertson, we have now done the heavy lifting on building the system and are at the place where we are dotting the I's and crossing the T's. We will move into the operational phase this year and we'll be able to produce management reports as well as making specific queries to the financial database to help us plan new programs and events. We are so grateful. Thank you, thank you, Kelly, for all of your help and leadership in putting this together. These systems are really critical to position sanctuary for operations and expansion in the future. So now after a, a, br a brief interlude for the numbers part, let's continue the tour of sanctuary.
Thank you, Barb. And I'll do I'll do just that. Let me share my screen and show you a little more on our tour. And as I spoke a, a moment ago, um, if you've been here for for <clears throat> a holiday, um, we've also had our, our our Thanksgiving to our donor parties here. We've had other events and um, and even retreats. I just want to show you one of the things we do besides welcoming you is feed you. Tom and Ken are excellent chefs. And um, I'm, I'm, I know a few of you are gonna smile when you see some of these pictures. We have had events outside by the pool in this case, and, and we still hope to host um, other events like this one, a wedding obviously with the gazebo. I don't know how many weddings we've done here, Ken, with the bride and groom or the bride and bride or the groom and groom in the gazebo. And this is a formal event you can see this is back from the pool, the sanctuary property over here in the tiny house. Um, again, just a gorgeous site to do weddings. Um, we do a little bit of informal work, um, a little pool party there. Sometimes we fit more people in, in a world before social distancing. Um, but again, there's been a lot of laughter, a lot of joy, a lot of music, and a lot of splashing going down in that pool. I'll have to leave it at that because, again, the stories would make us last even longer. Um, we were really blessed last year, a year before, actually, to do a series of retreats for a local church, our local MCC here in Austin. And we were able to feed and um, do the retreats inside the big farmhouse. This is Ken teaching. And you can see where we fit nearly 20 people in each week, we had four cohorts. We ran a spirituality retreat in this local church. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, on break times, they ran out to the goat pens, like I said. So what's a retreat without a fire pit? It's right over here. And goaties and gall gubs puppies. So lots of smiles as usual. This is what they did every time we would graduate a cohort. They would jump around the, um, the sanctuary stone and say goodbye to us. We've had many other fun events here. One of our favorite and most memorable was a Mardi Gras. Again, a lot of these pictures are pre-COVID. We understand that, but we're just trying to give you a flavor of the joy and the energy here at Sanctuary. We've had groups um, from the local area come out. This again, a group, um, the cancer support group from our local MCC come out. And we have spaces outside where folks can social distance and still take part of the kind of the serenity and the beauty of the grounds. We have had Easter where there's too many people to feed inside. And so along the front of the farmhouse, we are able to either put food or put people eating food and down into the gazebo as well. This uh, Thanksgiving dinner, one of the many sites, this is a table inside the kitchen. And again, I was thinking about this this morning. Could you imagine if this dining room table could talk? How many of you have been around this dining room table over and over and over and told story after story? And we can't wait to uh, welcome the rest of you around this magical table. Finally, one of my favorite places for taking pictures. This is from the dining room into the kitchen, but this is like the food line. And again, how many of you have been in this food line before where you're just waiting to cruise through and fill your plate with everything magical? So I just wanted to offer a few things there. We love to gather, we love to eat, and we love to feed people here at Sanctuary. Ken, I know before I wrap things up, you've got just a, a few more words to say. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, Cheryl told you about their experience at MCC Toronto several years ago, and we just happened to have done exactly the same thing when I was pastor here at MCC in Austin. We asked uh, individuals for a $10 monthly donation and almost 200 people responded and that made it possible for us to make really significant contributions to other organizations here in our city uh, who shared our values. So you might not think that a $10 or $20 a monthly donation um, makes that much difference but we have discovered that it really really 
does. And right now we have individual monthly donors who give from $10 a month to hundreds of dollars a month. And it is all of those contributions combined together that make it possible for us uh, to do the things that we're talking about today. And now as we begin approaching uh, our, our funders and we begin construction, the number of people supporting us financially at any level uh, becomes much, much more important even than it's been in the past. So only if you are able to become a uh, monthly supporter comfortably uh, at any amount, uh, please just contact Cheryl again at Cheryl at SanctuaryInTheWoods.com. Thank you. So as we close things up today, my friends, first I'm going to ask Cheryl and Barb maybe cruise through that very full chat room and gather some questions. And in a minute, I'm going to be closing and um, we'll have some a couple more pictures and then we'll have a chance if you'd like to stick around for those Q&A or for those of you who've given us an hour of your time, we just, just so appreciate it. So as we close the presentation today, I'm honored to speak again for our entire team here and say thank you so much for carving an hour out of your time today to listen to us share the dream of our hearts. Since its inception, Sanctuary in the Woods has always been a place of peace and people, of conversations and community, and of laughter and love and personal and spiritual expansion. And as I shared last year, the challenging side of building something so powerful and full of potential and intention is that our dream didn't come with an instruction booklet. And even if it had, our world has changed so much over the last two years that any set of instructions written before March of 2020 would simply be obsolete today. So our story and our journey continues to be one of continual becoming. As Cheryl said earlier, we thank God we've trusted and leaned in on God's timing, that we didn't rush into building a retreat center that would probably not serve our world as well as the one we're building now and would probably mm -hmm. be standing empty. We also thank God that we risked expanding our online presence after that very successful uh, uh, virtual sanctuary Seder so long ago and we launched Sanctuary Online. That one decision has forever changed us and has allowed us to expand our network exponentially more quickly than we ever could have had people had to find us out here in the woods. Going online also allowed us to dream bigger than we ever have. And when we had such a powerfully positive response to our pilot, A Taste of CLM this past Lent, we're looking to the future and intending to rewrite and redesign CLM for a fully virtual launch, hopefully later this year. Finally, Ken shared that we are indeed standing at a crossroads regarding our work with Sanctuary Online. Do we continue our varied and general weekly programming, kind of a one size fits all? Or do we specialize and begin to build different programming to suit different audiences? Our aim, of course, within all that we do is to ensure that we remain relevant. At our core, we're teachers, clergy, coaches, and we know in our hearts that we're called to create space, be it brick and mortar, be it on a ship, in a campground, or over the internet. A space that allows people to feel safe, to feel heard, to be challenged, and to be loved. We want to be a place that initiates important conversations and that invites people to continue becoming, becoming rested and refreshed, becoming people who can reframe all of the circumstances of our lives, people who become even more involved, evolved, conscious and caring, and powerful humans living in our communities. We invite you to stay connected with us, to continue to engage us, um, and to visit us on site when it's safe, to visit it on, online whenever we're open, to follow us on YouTube and Twitter, just kidding, none of us know how to tweet, but really to keep track of us on our Facebook page and our website. You have to leave this call knowing 
that we hold each of you and so many more of our, of our supporters of our sanctuary community families. We hold you in our hearts as you hold our vision in your prayers. And we need you to know how much your support and encouragement means to us every day, every step on the way to all we're called to be doing. Thank you so much for being here today. Now, I have just one more or two more pictures. <laughs> but someday we can't wait to welcome you, all of you, to this sacred space, a place where you two can rest and refresh and reframe. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing today. We know we've taken just past an hour of your time. And what we'd love to do is for those of you who need to step off and move on to the rest of your Sunday, please do so. We will have this recording posted, of course, on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page and probably actually on our website because it's an annual meeting. Um, if you need to drop off, be blessed. If you'd like to stick around for some conversation and to answer some of these questions, we'll be doing that as soon as we say goodbye to those of you who are tagging off. Thank you so much, my friends. We appreciate you. All right, thank you. Hey, thanks for thank being you. here. <laughs> I'm going to open up the chat and Barb and Cheryl, I'm going to look to see if you guys have gathered some of the uh, questions that we can begin to manage. That's on me. No, no, it isn't. Do you still want to keep recording, Joe? Sure, I can always stop the recording later, but I think the okay. questions might be important for folks as well. Okay. Mom, mom is saying good to see you. Good to see everybody. Bye, Mom. Good to see you, Mom. Bye, LZ. Bye, Mr. Yeah. Ray. <laughs> Here's your voice is going crazy. Okay, all um, right.